come write a romance novella with me in a month. Oh, that's kind of a dramatic entrance, but hello everyone. <laughs> my name is Jenna. You guys can call me Jenna. Welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new. Hi, hello. I am an author. Also, I should say that. Hi, I'm a Canadian fantasy author. And yeah, you heard that romance part right. So here's the thing. Yesterday, yesterday, I was scrolling on the interwebs as one does. I think it was Instagram. And I saw Kobo, because I follow Kobo, which is the kind of like Canadian version of Kindle, sort of. Yeah, I saw Kobo have like a little announcement photo on their on their feed and I was like what is this and they were announcing a contest for Canadian writers to write a holiday themed romance novella and have it submitted between June something and like August 15th or something I don't know I don't remember the days specifically and then I sat there for a moment and I was like Am I about to do this? And then I like sent it to my friends and I was like, is it dumb for me to try and do this? <laughs> they were like, it's a novella. It's like 15,000 to 20,000 words. That's, that's the word count that Kobo has set. It's nothing. So I'm gonna try and write a romance novella first draft by the end of June. So <laughs> yesterday I was originally gonna write a novella that was like a Christmassy type of visit into Aramount, but I looked back at the comments of that video, or that that post, and it has to be contemporary, so I was like, well, fuck, I guess I can't do Ari and Finn's Christmas. <laughs> I can't do that. So I started brainstorming other things that I could do, and like tropes that I really liked, and then I was asking my friends, we have a specific like writing kind of playlist, playlist? Group chat. <laughs> Jesus, my brain is gone. I just kept like brainstorming at them and they were helping me with certain things. And I'm like, what do you guys love in your romance books? Like tropes that you really love, even like micro tropes, like little tiny things that you love seeing in books. And so they just kept like sending me things. And <laughs> I came up with an entire premise yesterday. And last night I started outlining the book, kind of like scene by scene. Our, it's gonna be queer. It's gonna be a sweet soft bookstore owner and a grumpy baker trapped in a blizzard blackout in the bookstore together because of extenuating circumstances. It's like the storm of the century is coming and they're both alone for Christmas. And it's like just a couple days before Christmas that this happens. And it's, it's just gonna be this kind of sweet, heartwarming type of sweet soft Christmassy vibes. And I, I gotta say, I don't love a lot of Christmas romances because when I read the Christmas romances, they don't hit the Christmassy vibes enough. So my goal with this one is to make it Christmassy as fuck <laughs> in, the, in, in the best way that I can do. And yeah, so it's gonna be kind of, it's gonna be just essentially like Arrowmount, but if it was in real life, a fictional town with a fictional street, fictional cafe and a fictional bookstore, all that good stuff. I think it's gonna be sweet and I wanted to vlog the experience. So that's why we're here. <laughs> <laughs> and honestly, like, even if I don't get picked for this contest, I might even just publish it anyways myself because I could do that. I have the ability to do that. So I might be publishing, I will be publishing a holiday romance this year, whether it gets picked up by Kobo or I do it on my own around November. That's fun. Who fucking knew? But yeah, the, the goal is to have the First draft done by the end of June so that I can spend July fucking polishing the shit out of it. And then August is when it's due in for the contest. So that is the plan. It gets in the way of Aramount writing, but you know what? That's okay. This is what my brain wanna, wants to work on right now. I think this is gonna be a fun challenge. One, because it can't be fantasy. Two, because I'm a fantasy fucking author. I'm about to break into the romance genre. And three, because I'm about to write the cutest, sweetest, softest, grumpy, sunshine, queer romance you've ever fucking read. And I'm really excited about it. So let's... Do it. I love it. And I'll give you as much details as I can. So it's going to be Margot, who is the bookstore owner, and Jacqueline, or Jack, who is the baker. Jack is kind of like grumpy, butch, just is having a really hard time this Christmas because she was supposed to be visiting her brother, but the storm has grounded all planes. And so she's not going to be able to get out there, but she really wants to be out there because 
her brother just had a brand new baby with his wife and she wants to go smother that little baby with all her love. Margot is alone this Christmas, but she's usually, usually pretty alone at Christmas. Like she doesn't really mind that much. She doesn't have that much family. Uh, her grandma who gave her the bookstore, like her bequeathed her the bookstore is retiring down in Florida and <laughs> she's just having the time of her life in her retirement community. And so she's just having her sweet, soft, cozy Christmas. And she's very excited to just do her own thing this Christmas, curl up with her cat. And at the beginning of this book, the storm is coming, obviously, storm of the century. And everyone is like, or storm of the century. I just keep calling it that because that's what it is in my head. Everyone on this little street is kind of battening down the hatches. Like everyone's like running last minute errands, but like at this point of the book, like no one is out because the wind is picking up and the flurries are starting. Like it is coming and it's coming quick. So Margot is at the moment, like just like kind of doing some online order packaging and just like putzing around her store and listening to an audiobook like on a speaker because no one's in the store and she also has like an antique book collection in the back that her grandma is like it's her grandma's prized possession and not many people know about it only like collectors know about this particular room in the back so it's, just, it's like a very secretive little part of the bookstore and she's about to close she's all this kind of stuff she turns off the audiobook and she hears water dripping she goes into the back and she and there's a leak over these beautiful antique books. And so she freaks the fuck out. And it's from the cafe above her, but the family who runs the cafe above her are on vacation for Christmas. They're not there. So the cafe's closed and she is panicking because all of these books are now in danger of like water damage and mildew and all this kind of stuff. So she's in a state. Jack Baker, she closes up her bakery after one last person rushes in for an order that they made for a bunch of Christmas cakes. And now her whole bakery smells like Christmas cakes and she's fucking annoyed about it because she can't have her Christmas that she was dreaming of. And so she kind of goes outside and she gets all like the the baked goods that are left over so that they don't go bad over the however long she's not gonna be able to be in the bakery. She grabs a sourdough starter because she can't leave that alone. And its name is Pete, which I love. <laughs> she looks outside and she sees the only lights still on are from the bookstore. And she's like, I gotta go check in on Margot just to make sure everything is okay. Because Jack is just sweet like that. And Jack is like grumpy, but like really super sweet on the inside. I'm just so excited to write. That's one of my favorite dynamics, like the sweet, soft, happy, and then like the, the just grumpy, but soft on the inside. I love it so much. It's one of my favorite dynamics. So Jack goes and checks in on Margot. <sighs> finds Margot panicking over the leak. Jack is like, well, let me help you. And uh, antics ensue. They end up getting stuck in the bookstore because of the blackout and because like they need to take care of this leak and clean up and move all the books and all this kind of stuff. And then they get stuck there because the storm hits and it like snows them in essentially. So they get stuck in the bookstore overnight and it's just gonna be this like kind of cozy, sweet, you know, it's a novella. So it's not like gonna be super intense or long. Obviously it's a novella, but it's gonna be, it's gonna be fun. I'm gonna just drench it in, in holiday softness and cheer. And there's gonna be a moment, even though there's a blackout, there's gonna be like battery powered fairy lights or Christmas lights that Margot has. There's gonna be soft like Christmas music playing. They're gonna read stories to each other. Like it's gonna be this whole thing. It's gonna be lovely. And there's gonna be actions upon like previous attraction between these two. And I think it's gonna be great. So get, get ready. Cause we're about to embark on writing my very first novella and also my very first proper romance. I mean, when I was little, when I was younger, I wrote a contemporary YA book. That was the first book that I ever finished. But this is like gonna, gonna be like a proper adult romance novella. I'm excited. Get ready. Let's fucking do this. Let's write a heck of novella and try to get it published by Kobo. And if it doesn't get published by Kobo, I will publish it myself for you guys for Christmas. So, so exciting. And it won't be under J.A. Colligan. I'm thinking of just putting it under Jen Colligan for like a romance name so that my romance name and my fantasy name are like slightly different so people don't get confused <laughs> but same last name you know what do you guys think what do you guys think let me know in the comments what you are what your impressions of this are let me know also your favorite micro tropes for fan for romance books that you read like what are the little things that you love to see like i'm talking my friends <laughs> my friend yelena gave me this one where it's like the angry nice gestures where like, for example, shoveling someone's sidewalk out of spite or like out of being like, you're so fucking dumb. Like, why don't you shovel your goddamn sidewalk? You're gonna hurt yourself. Like, 
little things like that she loves one of my favorite microtropes is like the realization of feelings and it's literally just the oh oh it's very popularized in fan fiction but i did it in a second story because it just hits you know it just hits anyways let me know your favorite microtropes i would love to know <laughs> and we're gonna we're gonna have fun i i think i'm gonna have a lot of fun with this so love that for me Hello friends, it's a little later. I have officially finished outlining this book, this novella. We have, let's see how many words, 2,099 words of an outline. <laughs> because it's, it's one of those things where I decided to do, let me turn you around. I decided to break this down in my Scrivener doc, like by kind of beat as to like what was gonna happen in the story. And there was a lot more at one point and I kept like finagling things around and I originally had these labeled something different. I had others labeled that ended up not being needed to be labeled and ended up being looped in with other things, that kind of a thing. So I had them broken down and I have only this amount because I have to keep reminding myself that this is very short, very, 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 very short. And then in each of these, I started by doing like a bracket type of thing. Where is my mouse? So just like, nope. That was me trying to write something, but like brackets, right? Brackets, 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 brackets. Kind of like what I'm gonna do, things that we lead to, like moments that are gonna happen in the the, the scenes, and then going into this, and then deciding that this that it was gonna be dual POV. Just little things like that, kind of walking through the story and the beats and like what was gonna happen all the way through, little emotional moments. There were some types of things that I like have, like little dialogue bits, little things that came into my mind. I also tonight have been kind of filling up very vaguely. I remember that Pinterest existed, even though I've been on Pinterest every day of my life for the past month and a half or more, just like scrolling aimlessly. I love Pinterest. But <laughs> I was like, oh, like I should probably start building a Pinterest board just to get the aesthetic. And I do that mainly so that I then have access to things that I can use for promotion stuff, especially promotion like TikToks and things. Like if I do those like flashy, like this is the vibe of the book and then it's just a bunch of Pinterest photos, those kind of things. I like having a stack of them somewhere. And also I like looking at it because it's pretty when it's all in aesthetic, you know? I decided to do that. I started, I opened up a Pinterest board. I'm also calling this Project Sourdough, by the way, very fun. And I, I still don't have a fucking title. I started trying to brainstorm titles earlier, which is what that random B-roll clip was. I don't know what this title is gonna be. I'm gonna have to write the book and then see if a quote like pops out and like is title material or if I want to lean into the like pun-ness of a Christmas holiday romance, you know? I even scrolled through a giant master list of Goodreads Christmas romances to see if anything would like inspire me and nothing was. So I just have to write this, I guess. I have to figure out where I'm at, learn more about these characters, that kind of a thing, all that good stuff. But yeah, making that Pinterest board and like kind of hunting for like a specific aesthetic of like the darkness of being in a blackout, it's nighttime, and then having like Margot, the, the bookstore owner, she has specific battery powered lights that like are Christmas lights and they are the old tones of Christmas lights. Like she found them, special ordered them online because she really, really likes like the, the old strands of Christmas lights that have pink in them because you can't find those anymore. One, because they're super huge fire problems, right? They're fire hazards, <laughs> those old Christmas lights. And, and they're kind of hard to find. I don't, they're probably not hard to find anymore in this moment of time. They're tricky to find and that kind of stuff, but she loves the aesthetic of like the old Christmas tones, the softer, sweeter, you know, like the, the kitschy decoration and stuff like that. She's that kind of a person. She's obsessed with Christmas and she gets it from her grandma because her grandma, like that was the style that she grew up with, with Christmas stuff. And that's what she gave essentially to Margot. So it's like, I was looking specifically for an aesthetic of being in a blackout with a winter storm and it being sapphic and it just being like lit by just Christmas lights, like that kind of aesthetic. Doing that, it like peaked a few scenes in my head or like few like emotional moments or a few like visual moments that I wanted in this this latter half of this novella. And I think I have nailed it. I have nailed 
the vibe just even just in planning the book like kind of the vibe that I want to aim for I think I've nailed it in just the planning so we have 2,000 words of an outline we need to somehow flesh this out into about 15 to 20,000 words of a story and I need to find the voices of the characters and I need to kind of find the rhythm of the story. I've also got like the end image I'm very happy with. I'm gonna also, and my brain is trying to tell me that I need to think of like chapter length and, and things like that, but I don't need to. I will just write it all down and then I will split it into palatable chapters that are all kind of balanced by the end of it. Anyways, my air is now kicking in. Perfect timing. Uh, but yeah, that's the update. <laughs> we've got an outline and we've got a breakdown of the beats we got a breakdown of the chapters, and now it's currently 12.30 at midnight, midnight 30 <laughs> in the morning a.m. So I'm going to call it and go to bed. <laughs> Weirdest thing, though, I will say one last thing. Looking up the aesthetic of winter and like trying to get myself in the headspace of the cozy, soft storm aspect of this because it's summer. <laughs> My air just kicked on. Like... I wore a dress today to work and it was like slightly cooler today, but like, oh my God, my mom came over today to paint my cabinet in my bathroom and, or to like start painting it because she wanted a project. And <laughs> she, oh my God, we were both just like sweating, dripping. Last night I could not fall asleep because it was, it was like 4 a.m. by the time I fell asleep, I think. Like I was just laying in bed, just like, I'm so, I was playing fan physics, trying to get air into my bedroom to cool everything off. For some reason, it wasn't even hot outside. It was just so humid and my place was, I was just dripping and I was like, well, okay. It's not even hot outside. I don't even think it's like gotten hotter than 24 degrees this entire week. <laughs> like it's not hot outside, but for some reason in here, it gets toasty. Anyways, so we're getting into summer and my brain is in Christmas mode and I'm kind of excited about it. I'm so excited about this story. Like my teeth hurt. It's so, it's gonna be so sweet. And just for my friend Sophia, I have planned a moment for sexy times. Amidst the stags, get ready. Oh, my ear went off, look at that, short term. <laughs> it, it was like, no, you wanna talk about sexy times? I'm gonna turn off now. I might be writing, oh, you motherfucker. <laughs> it's playing games with me. I might be writing a sexy scene in this. And that sounds like a lot of fun. And a new challenge. I've never really done that properly. And to see, I've dabbled because sometimes it just occurs. But properly, this is interesting. Anyways, that's the update. I'll catch you guys when I got more to say. But woo, Christmas, I love it. <laughs>since I've last talked to you. I forgot to update this vlog. I was updating a TikTok vlog instead. <laughs> but it is officially June 13th. And I got the feeling that I wanted to upload this kind of in like weekly installments. So let's do an update of where we're at, friends. I mean, we've been kind of at this for 10 days now, I think is where, where we're kind of at. So let's see here. Last time I talked to you, I had... The outline started, I had my Pinterest board done, and I was just like contemplating yield vibes. And now I'm sitting at <laughs> 7,375 words, minus some of the outline words. So like 200 there, 400 there, 100 there, 200 there, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. So there's maybe like maybe 800 words of that are outlined still because as i'm writing each of these chapters each of these installments i'm going in and like eliminating the outline bit by bit as i'm like writing it out so that i can like clear it out and it's not part of the word count i am simultaneously <laughs> thinking i'm like this is going to be over the 20,000 word mark because i am an overwriter chronically and also i'm like do i have enough story for 20,000 words which is so funny because oh my god yes i do i did the math the other day and a 20,000 word novella is about 57 pages at 12 point font, which is quite big font for a book. And I was thinking about that and I was like, oh my God, like that's so few pages. Like I can't even do, if I was to self-publish this, 
instead of winning the Kobo contest, for example. And I was publishing this 20,000 word novella. If I wanted to do paperbacks of it, which I kind of want to because paperbacks make my life so happy, I could hold it physically, you know? There would not be able to be any like words on the spine <laughs> because Amazon, like, it's like, no, no, like, you can't, like, there's a max of pages that have to be there for there to be any spine stuff. So I thought that was pretty funny. Anyways, I have been having the time of my life with this. <laughs> I have both started building a playlist on, on uh, Spotify and also have found a playlist on Spotify that's, like, called the Snowstorm at the Cabin or something, something like that. Let me pull it up that I have been listening to. Cabin in a Snowstorm, that is what it's called on Spotify. It's a beautiful, beautiful playlist. I love it. The vibes are impeccable. I'm thriving. I'm taking what I've learned from the, the challenge that I did with Aramount Book 3 when I was finishing draft one and I wrote like 52,000 words in like 18 days or something ridiculous like that. I'm taking what I learned from that experiment, from that like push about my writing and like how I can lock myself in and like really get into it. I'm trying to implement that back into the writing of this story, which has been great. And so I just get my big old headphones, pop them on, no distractions anywhere else, pop the music in. If I need to, I will lock it on a certain song. The one song that's been really working is Birds of a Feather by Billie Eilish off her new album. That one just for some reason just locks me in the mood and I just keep writing. And so <laughs> I am at 7,300 words for this draft so far, which is almost halfway through the draft. And I am not yet halfway through the story. I'm close though, I'm very close, <laughs> very close. <laughs> oh no, maybe I am halfway through the story, just about, just, a, just around half of the story, which is very exciting. So I'm coming up to the, the midpoint turn, which I have to make sure there's a little bit of like an emotional beat there. I have to do all this kind of stuff. That's for later me to do when I'm editing and tightening things up. Cause I know, I know I'm gonna be over 20,000 words. I have also pinned down a preliminary title for this, which is very exciting. It, in my mind, cause I was, I explained at one point, I was scrolling through countless fine blog posts and, and different things on Google trying to figure out different like Christmassy puns and stuff for finding like a phrase or lyrics from a Christmas song or like just little random sayings like you know let it snow let it snow let it snow like little sayings that happen around Christmas that are wintry or Christmassy I was trying to find something that would work that I was like that that like that jumped out at me and I was like that's not gonna work and then I was trying to figure out something with the word sourdough because I thought that was kind of funny. So I'm still open to like new titles if they come across my, my, my way when I'm writing this book. But I did settle on one and I ended up changing the two that, the, the last names for my characters to match this because it's gonna be, <sighs> okay, I'll just tell you. The preliminary title for this is Mary and Bright. And I have, yes, I've changed their last names to Mary and Bright because I'm just that person. I think originally I had it as like Margot Courier and Jacqueline Baker because I was like, I'm just gonna lean into the funny. So we're leaning into the funny in a Christmassy way. <laughs> and Mary and Bright is a very Christmassy title to do. And it's also like, it's the two of them, Mary and Bright. And I think, I think it's, I think I did Margot Mary and yeah, Margot Mary and Jacqueline Bright because alliteration is fun. <laughs> Anyways, that's where we're at. That's where we're at. I'm really enjoying it. I'm having a good time. But I can also tell that I'm going to need to like sink into it in a, in a kind of a way because I feel very surface level on the story right now. So maybe I just need to like consistently keep writing at it every day to like really get into the vibe of the story. But I think it's going to be okay. I think we're going to be okay. I just need to get to the end of this draft and then I can go back and edit and finagle and whatever. Air just kicked in. I apologize if you can hear that. Today is Thursday, June 13th, of course. So after work is done, I am going to try and write a little more of this and we're gonna see if I can hit that midpoint turn today and in this vlog before I call this vlog and then start part two of writing this romance novella. Because I think it's very fun. <laughs> I think I think it's very fun and I'm enjoying myself immensely. Yeah, I don't know, it's just, it's making me want to write a Christmassy romance novella for Aramount as well. Because when I put it up, when I put up, I put up a post on, on TikTok and Instagram and on Instagram, a couple people were like, can we still get the Aramount one? <laughs> I'm like, we want the Aramount one too. 
So I was I, and I've got an idea in my head for one now because of course I do. And it's gonna be some sort of like Christmas lead up or like Christmas, whatever it is in my fantasy world, like a winter festival or whatever. I gotta figure that out. Winter festival lead up to said festival and it's gonna be like the whole town kind of coming together for like a feast of some kind or or it'll be our characters that we love and know coming together for said like big family gathering feast type thing hosted of course at the old narrow and i need to figure out a way to get kira and lottie back in town sage won't be there unfortunately because she's on a boat somewhere adventuring and doing her own thing <laughs> But it'll be like Ari and Finn and it'll be Kieran and Lottie and stuff like that. I, I'm, I'm finagling something in my, my noggin brain, brain noggin. And it's going to be set in between Kieran and Lottie's book and Airmount book three, which is going to, and Airmount book three, by the way, just so you know, is going to be end of winter, spring. So it's like the next year. So yeah, anyways, I got more romance novellas percolating in my brain noggin, which is kind of fun. I'm not going to lie. I'm thinking of like, other ways I could do like other other Christmassy novellas I could eventually do and like do like a bind up. I don't know where my brain is going. It's doing indie author things of like, what can I do in the future with this? So, <laughs> but yeah, Project Sourdough is coming along. Merry and Bright, if you will, is coming along. Almost halfway. We're gonna see if I can get to the midpoint turn today because yesterday I was at mom and dad's looking after Bella and I had intended to make the evening just like a writing evening and I just was not in the headspace for it. I ended up writing like I think 400 words or something. So still got words down, but not as many as I wanted. <laughs> so we're gonna try today and see if we can finish the chapter that I'm currently working on, which is called The Cafe. It's gonna not be called The Cafe. This is the beat. It's gonna be called, the, the beat of the story is called The Cafe. The next one, the beat is The Blackout, which is the midpoint turn. I'm excited. I'm really into this story. I'm into the vibes of this story and I can't wait to have this all down so that I can then hand it to a couple friends. Hopefully they'll be able to read it really, really quickly and give it to me real quick, real, real fast with like thoughts. <laughs> and then I can kind of finagle some stuff around, edit this to perfection. <laughs> perfection. Anyways, I'll talk to you a little later when I, I'm done work and stuff, but yes. Also, yeah, I wash my hair halfway through the day today. I use my, my lunch hour to wash my hair because what else are you gonna do when you work from home, right? <laughs> us to the midpoint word count wise and I'm just at no I'm pretty much at I'm pretty much at the midpoint for this book um I'm literally there in like the fifth out of nine chapters or whatever categories I have on the side I'm halfway through what I have that was lovely I'm kind of hitting some of the more emotional beats I'm kind of drawing on that atmosphere mm. Mmm, it's good. <laughs> I did have a little bit of trouble today actually like trying to focus though, even though I did get 3,800 words or something down today. <laughs> I don't know, today was just an interesting one. I ended up after work finishing a book that I was reading. I was in the middle of reading this novella, <laughs> fun fact. <laughs> so I finished that because I had like 40 minutes left in the audiobook, and then I kind of just messed around on TikTok and then I was like, I should probably get some writing in before I make dinner. So I wrote until about 6.30 and then maybe even seven. And then I decided to, to make dinner and made some delicious pasta and came back and continued writing. But it was like in spurts of attention and being able to focus even with my like no distraction policy of mine <laughs> where I just put my headphones on and like try focus in with like some good music. I had that playlist that I mentioned earlier playing and all that kind of stuff and it just did it. Like I was able to get into the groove, but in like bursts and like spurts of it, it wasn't like a continuous writing evening, which makes sense because it is now 1120. <laughs> and I started writing at like eight-ish. So it was not a very quick 3,800 
hundred words, but that's okay. I think we're doing okay. I think we're kind of plugging along and I feel like I could probably finish this up in the next couple days for sure. So that should be wonderful. At least the first draft, finish that up and then leave it for a few days and then come back to it just so I can get a fresh look at the story and see how things work and all that kind of stuff. And I do have actually, I have found a Christmas novella on my Kobo that I want to try and read just to see how it works or how someone else does it. And I think it's the one by Chloe Lise, which is a very popular, who is a very popular author, a romance author specifically. It's The Mistletoe Motive. So I wanted to try and read that one and see how that author kind of does it and how they like space out the novella of it all. I know this novella is like almost, an, it's almost like a novelette. It's so little that I'm writing. It's 20,000 words, right? That's so little. It's 57 pages. That's nothing. So I'm, 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 I say that being used to like 150 page novellas with fantasy. So maybe, maybe it's more normal in the romance genre. I'm not sure. But yeah, so I am going to probably dabble in that one just to see it like if it teaches me anything, which can be very weird reading of a Christmas romance in the middle of summer, but hey, it's fine. I mean, it's not technically summer yet. It's not June 21st yet, or whenever the first day of summer is. What a week. So I, I, I guess 10 days. It's been 10 days since I've decided to start this project and started this vlog. I not only brainstormed with my friends, came up with a premise, figured out some tropes, figured out my characters, chucked them into a world that just kind of came to be in my brain, did a Pinterest board, outlined it scene by scene, figured out nine specific kind of beats of the story and actually started writing it. And now we are 10,000 words in to this project and we have about 10,000 words to go and about four and a little bit of chapters to go still. So I think this should be great. And I'm, I'm kind of sitting at the point where my chapters naturally, as I've been writing this project, have kind of hit between about 1600 words to about 2100. But the chapter that I'm working on now is quite long because it's like the meat of the story. It's like right in the middle. So I'm going to have to go through and like do some different splitting up. So it's not going to be nine chapters in the end. It's going to be more than nine chapters in total, but they will all be balanced in slightly nice and snappy chapters because I know snappy chapters are the best. I know people like that the best. <laughs> Anyways, my friends, let me know down below if you are excited about this. And as I said at the beginning, let me know your favorite micro tropes to see in books. Again, those are like the very little things that happen in books that just make you happy. Like not necessarily like a big trope, like enemies to lovers or like grumpy sunshine, but like little things that's, that show up in books every so often. Let me know your favorites in the comments below. I would love to know. Let's see how hype you are for a queer holiday romance from your girl, either through the Kobo contest or by myself, publishing it by myself. <laughs> we'll see how, what ends up happening. But yes, thank you for sticking around for part one. I will see you soon in part two of writing this romance novella draft and I'll catch you in another video very soon. Stay kind and keep on writing.